Hello everyone, this is Hazini and uh, today we are going to be learning something interesting in chemistry. Almost everything in chemistry is dependent on, on this topic, which you can see is elements and compound. So if you're new to this channel, make sure you like and subscribe and also do share with your friends and pass on the information. So have you ever wondered by seeing an object, what is this object made? For example, I have in pen here. When um, you ask uh, generally what it is made of, people tell and uh, refill, a cap, and plastic. But when they tell plastic, do you know what is plastic made up of? We say sand or, uh, or something like that. And we say kerosene when we talk about oils. When someone asks, what oil uh, is not mixable with water, we tell kerosene, petrol, etc. But when we go deeper into the kerosene, what is it made of? We get a term called atoms. So let us see what is atoms. Atom is the smallest particle in an object which can't be divided into further two. So, when, uh, the most, um, you know, suitable example for uh, proving that is the chalk. Let's imagine this as a chalk. When you start chopping it, you can chop it till the end. That end cannot be further chopped into two. So, that is the atom. So, um, atom cannot be seen with naked eyes. It needs... Um, microscope to see. Usually, even with a chalk piece, it's just an example given. But no special artist can also cut it in such a way that it can uh, be seen, the atom. So atoms, makes up, when combined, makes up two things, which is elements and compounds. Two or more atoms combined is known as molecules. So these molecules are of two types. One is elements and one is compounds. So let's see deep in what is elements and what is compounds. So this is an example of molecule which you can see. Please ignore this which tells you about electron and protons. We will uh, see to it further in the video. So this is how molecules is made up of. So there is one atom of oxygen. So this is a uh, molecule of water. So water symbol is H2O. H2O means two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. So here the white part represents oxygen. And the blue parts here represent two atoms of hydrogen. So every material is made up of molecule. Let's say for this book is also made up of molecule. And uh, our human body is made up of many, many atoms, more than thousand million atoms, which is... Uh, not possible to see. So, when we talk about molecule, we get to know that every object is made up of molecules. But there are three types of matter. So, matter is made up of molecules. Object, something means a matter. So, when we talk about matter, there are three types of matter, which are solid, liquid and gas. All these three types are made up of molecules. The scientific definition of matter is which has mass and occupies space. So when we talk about uh, matters, as, as I said, three different groups will come, solid, liquid, and gas. So it, uh, it is formed depending on how tightly this molecule are molecules are packed and what is the intermolecular force and the space so many people uh, yet don't know what is this intermolecular force space so uh, let's see what are the three types of matter first before going deep into this 
these are the three types of matter which can be seen here so what this is so here it shows solid and here where i am there it shows liquid and this is gas so you can see something of red blue and green here so these are the molecules and atoms so in solid if you see all are together packed which makes it to uh, you know not to be compressed but when we talk about uh, solid there are two types of solid one is which cannot be compressed and one is which can be compressed so if you see this pen you can't compress it however hard and however forced you do by a human you can't uh, squash it but even a machine can do this but a normal human can whereas if you take in soft toy you can uh, you know squash it easily with your bare hand so what we understand by this is there are two types of solid and whatever you squash or whatever you do, do the matter in the solids be the same which is the mass so when i take this book this book has a definite mass i want to make one thing clear that mass and weight is not the same weight is mass plus the gravity so mass is without the gravity so it would be somewhere around uh, approximately 100 to oh, you know 50 to 100 grams this book so this has a definite mass until and unless you start turning pages the mass of this book will be the same whatever you do you fold it like this or you or you know fold it or when you do like this or whatever you do the mass will be the same of this book and what is volume i told a matter is something which has mass and occupies space the occupying space is called as volume you might have volume uh, you might have heard in your maths lessons that volume is measured centimeter per cube or meter per cube so this book when i keep it on um a plain surface which is the table it occupies some amount of place so when i take this book and i'm keeping it on my hand it occupies some amount of space this is called the volume for solids the place will be the same if it is not squashable then it will be same but if you fold it and keep it will be different whereas if it is like this and you keep it on a table the volume will be same so this tells us the property that solids has definite mass and volume which cannot be changed to go with a further third one it is about the you know molecular structure in solids we know it is compactly packed which gives us a definite mass shape and volume so how is it definitely packed in solid like what is making it to sit together like if this is a atom and this is atom it is compactly packed so there is a force of attraction called intermolecular force this tells us uh, is it compactly packed or not it is a force of attraction which is weak in few substance few types of matter and very strong in few types of matter so in solid it is very strong so what happens is the intermolecular force is very strong so the intermolecular space is very less intermolecular it self stays the interaction between molecular force is very high and intermolecular space means the space between two molecules 
uh, if you take the gaseous form, which is here, it has very much space. The space here is known as the intermolecular space. Whereas in solid, when you see the you know structure of molecules and atoms, you see there is no space. So it has very little somewhere a dot or a pinch of intermolecular space. But it has a very strong attraction, which is called the intermolecular force. So these are the other two properties which makes solid to be compactly packed. And next we have the liquid, which is having the same three properties, but we should just consider if it is yes or no. So let's see further. So if you see liquids, liquids are example like uh, you have water, a glass of water. So water is in a liquid form a bottle of juice, you know, a can of oil. So this all comes under liquid. So here, when we take liquid, it has a definite mass. So uh, we'll be having an experiment to make sure that we prove it, that it has a definite mass. So that for an experiment, what do you need is a weighing scale and uh, two glasses of different size. So let's see if it um, measures the same. So here I have two glasses of different size. This is a little high and this is a little broad. So I have 200 ml water in this glass. So I have weighing scale down here and uh, you want to transfer the water slowly without spilling it. So it is in the top, it's in the peak level of the glass. And I'm going to measure this. Okay. Yeah. So it is showing the same 200 ml. If you want, you can check this. And uh, you can, uh, you know, it proves that it has the same mass. It has a fixed mass, whether you change the containers. And next, we'll be going with the volume. Here, the volume is different. So I have the same two glasses. The volume is in this glass. It occupies a space uh, which... Uh, is still here. It occupies space still here. But whereas if I shift this glass, it has an varied volume. So this shows that the liquids take the volume of the container. So in that first container, which I had, this one, it had, it is, it was very lengthy, but this was having a larger number of breadth. So it, it took the shape. So this proved that it does not have a definite volume. And next, what we're going to see is about the intermolecular space and force. Here, as you can see, it is uh, showing that it is not compactly packed like solid. So it has some amount, some, okay? It has some amount of intermolecular space and its intermolecular force is a little weaker. And here, the... You know, movement of uh, molecules are random. And next, we're going to see of uh, gas. So here the molecules are expressed with green. So first, we're going to see about the mass. So uh, the property is there is no definite mass for gas. So let's see why it does not have a definite mass. 
So it's not about mass, sorry. It's about it does not have a definite volume. I'm really sorry. I told the opposite one. It does not have a definite volume. For example, uh, air. Air is a form of gas. When it is stored in a balloon, it occupies the space of the balloon, which is hydrogen or the air which we fill. Whereas when we pop the balloon, it spreads all over the room. So the gas takes a how much of a space is available within the room. So it does not have a definite volume. And when we come to mass, yes, it does have a definite mass. So uh, there is a balloon which has a mass of uh, maybe 20 gram. And we will uh, transfer the same uh, you know, amount which is a balloon carefully to the wall. It is uh, most probably not, uh, you know, happening with us because we were mistakenly open it and it spread. So few, few specialists can do it. So when you uh, measure the ball and the balloon, yes, it has a definite mass, which is the same. And next we're going to see about the molecular structure. Here the molecules are very far from each other and the intermolecular force is very weak. The intermolecular space is very, very much. So it is not compactly packed and its movements are what, like wherever, not even random. Like however place it has, it just keeps floating. So our earth is completely covered by a layer of air. So it's a space, uh, you know, occupying, which is the earth atmosphere. And the space also has a large amount of air in it, which contains of hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, so many other. And earth's atmosphere is made up of two major gases, which is 21% of um, oxygen and 29% of uh, nitrogen. So we have learned the three types of matter. So that's it for today. In part two, we're going to learn about compounds and elements in depth about molecules. So thank you. Have a great day and keep watching House of Knowledge.